Um, and so our next presentation is from Professor Stacy Cooper, um, who will be also talking, like our first uh, presenter, about icebreaker activities and particularly bringing culture into the classroom. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Um, <clears throat> a little bit of a All right, so one of the, the things here um, is my activity called bringing culture into the classroom. It made me think about what Carlos said earlier about avoiding uh, the use of labels. Now, when we come to the classroom, the idea is about creating an inclusive classroom, and that we're going to hear someone talk about that, and the panel's going to talk about that. And when I think about my students and my research done with students at Hostos, one of the things that they always say is that Hostos is like their second home. I don't know if your students have said that to you, right? And so, one of the ways that we can um, promote that idea and keep students and retain students, hopefully, right, the idea of retention, is by creating a space where they feel that they can fit in. And so when I uh, came up with the idea of this little, um, you know, activity, it's not about looking at culture in a very stereotypical way, right? So what country are you from? You know, kind of like what Rayla was saying, going past those labels, going past those pretty, you know, um, stereotypical ideas about what culture looks like, but really focusing on what strength students bring into the classroom. So if you turn to page five, page seven of your, your uh, booklet, it gives you a pretty um, good idea of the activity. It's about being culturally responsive, being more inclusive in your classroom. And for your own self, you know, what I think, my advice is to be reflective about what your own kind of biases and your own ideas about what culture really is. Because oftentimes our, our the idea of culture is that you know you, you know we have so many nationalities and people get stuck at the level the superficial level of nationality. Not that it's not important, but people are so much more than just uh, the label of a nationality, right? And so culture can be you know uh, gender, it can be race, it can be age, it can be a lot of different things. But this is why I choose the idea of strengths. So if you turn to page seven, you'll see it. We'll try to you know get see if we can figure this out. Uh, turn to a partner. Somebody pick a partner. We're gonna pick a pair, right? Pick a pair. All right. Turn to your partner, and the first question you're gonna ask them is, or you know, try it. What are your strengths, right? This is a this is an interesting question. What does that mean to you? Try to answer that. What are your strengths? Okay. It's a lot of good conversation. So, as you're thinking about your strengths, try to think about where your strengths are. <laughs> Could your strengths be useful in college? If you were a student, or your job as a college professor? Okay. And is there a goal that you can create for this semester that can grow your strength? Is there any goal? Just one. One goal that you can create and employ to grow your strength. And the last question is more pertaining to the students. So when you graduate, who would be the happiest for you and why? Right? And this one gets interesting in school as well. Let's try to let's hear some, some answers. You guys are really good. Bring the conversations. I hope you learn a lot about your partners, but also about yourselves as well, right? So, who would, would anybody like to say something? I don't want to call anybody. Hi. <clears throat> good morning, everyone. Um, I, uh, for me, and uh, we were talking about. Uh, I, that enthusiasm is a strength and also um, a sense of purpose. And for, for me personally, a big strength is the sense of urgency I have with my students. If they ask a question, I try to get back to them immediately. And I think that sense of urgency is um, really, uh, is, is good because it, um, they trust me that I am interested in what they're doing and that I'm going to get back to them as quickly as possible. And uh, these, um, the where do the strengths come from? I have no idea where that sense of urgency comes from because in uh, my personal life I don't have it as much as my professional life. 
But I think it was because at a young age, I have a big family, I was responsible for myself. So if, and if I wanted something, I had to do it myself. So um, that work ethic, uh, which is a big part of that sense of urgency, came from that. And, um, and these are great for college uh, because we were talking about doggedness. Like you have to have this, this um, interest in getting things done and being focused. And uh, I always try in the beginning of a semester to troubleshoot issues that may come up. And I always try to do that in the beginning and the questions still come regardless of the information that I give them. And I find that each year that's getting more difficult, that they still, I don't know if they're not hearing me, if it's the way I'm presenting it, but as much as information I give them, they're still asking the same information. And I don't know who was happy when I graduated, I was. <laughs> classroom is, is um, being able to be flexible with your teaching as well, right? I know we all set out having these syllabi that are like incredibly idealistic and you know, you're like, I'm going to get everything in, right? But sometimes, and I learned this from my students like years ago, is that sometimes you have to be willing to let them choose, right? And so one of the things about cultural responsive teaching is letting them kind of choose some activities, choose some reading, and maybe even make an exercise or even a whole subject that is that they actually create. And so when you that allows them to take ownership of what they're doing. And so they talk about it, they work, it's hard sometimes they go like, oh, do I have to do all of this stuff? But what they get out of it sometimes is much more um, you know, beneficial. So, you know, it's, of course we heard scaffolding, you know, several times. Um, and then but also create a space that respects everybody. I think that's something that we all have to be mindful of all the time. It's not just your, your rules all the time. Do this, do this, do that. But you know, understand that they. This might be the first time they've ever been to school, to college, right? This is a big deal for them. So just you know, take a step back and put, maybe put yourself in their shoes sometimes. Huh? Of course. So, not here, but in my previous job, I had taught a class on uh, play and games, and a lot of the writing assignments were based on rules. And so I left a space, for, hearing Stacy uh, say that just now, uh, reminded me of how I left aside a week where the students would determine what the work was for that week. And collectively, as a class, we negotiated that we would have a test, but that it would be the opposite of everything tests are supposed to be. So we called it the test that is not a test. Uh, and so anything that would normally happen in a classroom exam, we inverted it. So the students wrote the questions. There was no punitive grade. We listened to music from a playlist that the students curated. Uh, and I don't know the pedagogical value of what I did that week, but uh, in terms of creating a classroom dynamic of the kind that Stacy's talking about, it was at least an interesting experiment. Thank you guys so much.